I attended a fundamental Christian school from kindergarten through eighth grade with a long list of rules that you had to adhere to. And if you broke any of them, I could be invited to come to the front of the class with a metal folding chair, place my head in between the back and the seat, hold on to the rails while a teacher disciplined us with a two inch wooden paddle with holes in it. So that was my childhood. And then we would go to chapel and we would hear about God's love and grace. So there was a, I remember as a child thinking about the disconnect from what I saw and experienced and what I was hearing. Uh, this school was closed a number of years ago by the state, but I was disciplined in front of the class many times. Now, uh, a lot of different things that I would do. I would show up sometimes, my hair would be touching my ears. I would show up without a collar on or without a belt on. And any one of those was cause for, for strict, severe discipline. Now, what the school was trying to do was teach a certain type of behavior. Now, behavior does not lead to holiness. Holiness is the topic of our devotional today. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. Two verses we're going to look at. You can follow along in your Bible or listen as I read these two verses. On the subject of holiness. But just as he, he being God, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written... Be holy because I am holy. Now, what does that mean? God is asking us to be like him. God is morally perfect. There is no one else like God. There is no one like God. No one, we can't even begin to completely understand God. A working definition of God. God is, is a spirit. He's infinite. He's eternal. And he's unchanging. In his being, in his wisdom, in his goodness, in his holiness, in his justice, and in his truth. It's just a working definition we have for God. God, there's no one like God, and we could never be like God. But yet God says in these two verses, be holy. Four times the word holy is mentioned in those two verses. So to understand that, let's look at the definition of holiness. What does it mean to be holy? The school I grew up in thought that behavior would lead to holiness. And the reverse is actually true. Holiness comes from within. It comes from a motive to love Jesus. It comes from a motive to be like Jesus. And the closer we get to Jesus, three H's begin to appear. Humility, happiness, or joy. Humility, happiness, and that third one is holiness. Our behavior begins to a change begins to change over time the closer we get to Jesus. Jesus and the Holy Spirit reveal some things in areas of our life that need to be changed. Behavior matters to God. Purity matters to God. How we treat people, how we speak really matters to God. But if the end goal is just behavior modification, that is never ending, that is exhausting, and that is tiring and it will never end. But holiness, by God's definition, is set apart. So be set apart, Christian. Be set apart, follower of Jesus. Look different on social media. Be different in your neighborhood. Be Stand out in your workplace because you are a follower of Jesus. We should be different and set apart. But not just set apart and removed like we're hiding out in our basement with our lights turned off. That is not God's intent. God's intent is that we be in the world. We be among people. We not, not be of the world, right? You might have heard that, be in the world but not of the world. So the second half of the definition of holiness is so important, friend. Be set apart for a specific purpose. Listen, I have a treadmill in our house. And it has been set apart. A treadmill is holy in the fact that it is unique and set apart and alone. It's in our garage. There are boxes on it and there's hangers hanging on our treadmill. It is not being used. It is failing in the second half of the definition of holiness for a specific purpose. I have a treadmill. It's set apart. It's serving no purpose. That purpose is to help get me in shape. But it is not doing that. 
The goal, Christian, is not just that you would be removed and taking up space. God's desire is not that you just take up space and work on your behavior. God's desire is that you would be set apart for a specific purpose. Now, I also have a toothbrush in my bathroom on our bathroom counter near my sink. Now that toothbrush is holy for me because it's set apart, it's unique for a specific purpose. That purpose is for me. I sure hope nobody else is using that toothbrush. That toothbrush is holy for me. Friend, you are holy for a specific purpose. God has set you apart. And there are a lot of passages in Scripture that call us some amazing things. Holy, a royal priesthood, a children of the king. You are set apart for a very specific purpose. As you become more like Jesus, it opens the door up to love God and love people even better than we're currently doing. You can model for friends and coworkers and other marriages that need help. You, as you become holy in these different areas of your life, it opens the door up to model what that looks like so we can love people even better. Behavior is not the end goal. Behavior is not the end goal. Holiness comes from within. Holiness comes from within. And as we become like Jesus, our behavior will, will, will change. Let me pray for us today as we all strive to be holy as God is holy. So, Father, thank you that you've invited us to be like you. That's humbling to even think about. And forgive us in the areas that we fall short. God, thank you for your grace in our life. Thank you that Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, has made us righteous before you. And I pray that today the specific purposes that you have for us would become clear uh, as we go throughout our day today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a really good day today.